Um, so how much did your early musicianship, the, those early years, say, you know, before you were even an adult, how much did that shape your eye and ear for talent later on, do you think? Well, it, it, it taught me a great deal, and I, it shaped me a great deal because I was so blessed that in the very beginning of my career, and I'll stick with the country, that live side, because my gospel career was fairly short-lived. Uh, I have worked with gospel artists in my adult life, but in, in my youth, my gospel career was fairly short. And um, But my career as a professional musician in a nightclub playing with a, a group that was playing country music and rockabilly and early rock and roll, um, I was playing with adults. Like the, the guitar player in the band, he had been uh, a house guitar player uh, for... Um, um, the Ozark Jubilee. And the Ozark Jubilee was the forerunner of the Grand Ole Opry. Wow. And there were a lot of regional Opry's back in those days, like the um, um, the Louisiana Hayride was another one. Um, I believe Joplin the, had one, didn't they? I'm sorry? Did jo didn't Joplin have a local Opry? I don't remember Joplin having an Opry. Okay. But 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 Springfield did, and okay. uh, and 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 again, it was like, um, you know, um, Red Foley's. It was a you know it was a Red Foley, and Red yeah. Foley really was outside of Nashville. There wasn't really much of a music industry in the Midwest except for Springfield, and Springfield had Red Foley and the Ozark Jubilee, and, um, um. Little Miss Dynamite, Brenda Lee, she launched her career there. She lived, I think, in Mississippi, and her parents mm. would drive her to Springfield to be a part of that show. Well, a lot of things sprung out from that. Um, there was a publisher that was based in Springfield named Cy Simon, mm -hmm. and his son, Scott Simon, went on to be a famous Nashville um, music business person, but Cy had a major publishing company in Springfield. And uh, one of his writers was a guy named um, Wayne Carson. And Wayne wrote hit songs. Well, he wrote the letter for the box tops. Oh man. Great. Which song. went on to be, which went on to be covered by everybody and their yeah. dog from mm -hmm. Joe, Joe Cocker and on and on. And so I knew then that I was connected into a music vibe and thing that happens in the Ozarks that you can't find hardly anywhere else around it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there was a music scene there. And now the Ozark Jubilee was long gone, but the people that I was working with, pretty much all of them had played with national artists had been to bigger levels of the business and I was competing. I was right there with them. But what it taught me was, I guess right off the bat, I was lucky to just fall into greatness. I guess right. really to, you know, I didn't pick those people. They picked me and thank God they did. Yeah. And but, just, just to update our, our listeners and viewers out there, if you don't know who Red Foley is and was, uh, Red Foley was one of the most, in my opinion, influential people um, yeah. when, it, when it comes to country music. He influenced Hank Sr. He influenced Patsy Cline. I mean, before all of these giant stars came along in the 50s and 60s, there was Red Foley. And yes. um, so just letting people know, um, Cliff is talking about Red Foley, but I want people, if you are interested, to definitely look up Red. Uh, you will be highly, highly um, influenced yourself, I think. Well, he was a legend, and his yeah. show, um, the Ozark uh, Jubilee, was was recorded uh, and broadcast on national television. Right. So Springfield, Missouri, had a national television show that featured country artists, and it was kind of like it was a jamboree. It was a little bit of Ed Sullivan meets uh, the Grand Ole Opry, mm -hmm. and uh, many, many everybody that was anybody in that era played that show. The, the people you've mentioned and, and others. Yeah, and uh, just a hugely influential person. Um, I don't think Red Foley gets enough credit um, nowadays. He doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't. Uh, 
Well, just what a he's what almost, a. Go ahead. He's almost a footnote, and right. it's really a shame because he he was really instrumental in so many careers. Uh, mm. Like again, Brenda Lee, yeah, um, Ronnie Self. Ronnie was an early rockabilly artist from Springfield. I actually played in Ronnie in the very end of Ronnie's life. I played in a band with his sister Dina. But Ronnie was an early rockabilly artist that was signed to, um, at that time, I think it was Columbia Records. Um, but he wrote um, Brenda Lee's first national number one song, I'm Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And it was because he was based there. He was working with Cy. He was connected to Red Foley. It's like, you know, that that's how it was when they needed songs. They went to Cy and Cy had uh, Ronnie and the rest is history. Well, uh, this is a very good example why I do these kinds of interviews is because I'd love to be educated, and I appreciate you educating me on Missouri music. I did not know any of this, so um, very interesting stuff. I knew of Red Foley, obviously. I mean, I'm, I'm a songwriter nerd, so I mean, you have to know who Red Foley is if you're into songwriters like I am.